everyone. I have a new batch of bows from Southwest Strings. They sent them to me because I was unhappy with what I'd been getting from them. I had been recommending the same Pernambuco bow for my students for 10 years, and it was $125 for a decent intermediate Pernambuco bow. But they suddenly took a turn for lower quality. So I called them to see what was going on and they said, it's just getting really hard to source Pernambuco bows in that low price range anymore. So I either had to lower my expectations <laughs> or increase my budget. So I asked them to send me a little sampler of bows under $400 so that I have some decent bows to recommend to my students who are getting a little bit more serious and they're wanting to get into that intermediate range. So I'm going to play five bows for you um, and I'm going to put exactly what they are in the, in the video description below. I'll just call them here bow one, two, three, four, and five. They're all under $400. And I'll give you the one hint um, that the uh, two of the bows are hybrids and we can have, that's another discussion. You can look up what hybrids are. They're half wood and half synthetic materials. And three of them are Pernambuco bows in different price ranges. So we'll get started here real soon. I just let, wanna let you know the things that I do when I'm comparing bows. I just play a few long notes just to see how it feels. How do I feel when I'm playing this bow? and also to see just the immediate change in sound. And it can be pretty dramatic, even on just an open string. So I just do that right off the bat. And then I always play something with bouncy bow, like a spiccato or a sauté, because uh, some bows do not have that, and you wanna have that option, unless you're strictly fiddle, and then it doesn't really matter that much. But um, I think some of the money is in a good sauté and spiccato. And then the other thing I check is a martelé. Can the bow come to a, a nice clean stop and not keep bouncing? And I call that the stability. If it keeps bouncing after I've stopped, then I call that a lack of stability. So it's kind of like wine tasting or coffee tasting. You have to agree on what your words mean, what your descriptors mean. And so, yeah, that's kind of where that's just the, 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 that's just the most basic Rosetta Stone for how, what I'm looking for in a nice bow. I'm recording on, this is my regular violin. It's a modern Italian instrument and I'm using my zoom without my shotgun or anything attached. And it's, it, it's right there. It's at the end of my arm and I'll use the same microphone on all the bows. So. Here we go. Let's get started. Bow number one. number two.
five.
four.
two. Do a few more to lay strokes. How about from Suzuki Book Two? Three. 
Three. So I hope that you've noticed a difference in the bows and I hope that you've kind of taken notes and made your own opinion about what you think of each of the bows um, because I'm about to share all the secrets now. So if you don't want to know the secrets, then hit pause and come back later. Um, the bows were in order of price. So bow number one was the cheapest, bow number Five was the most expensive and their exact models are listed down below in the video description. My observations, um, I, I tried these out before I knew the prices at all. I did, I just took all the labels off and I didn't want to know. And I was really happy with myself that I arranged them in their exact price order, preferring the three Pernambuco bows as both three, four, and five. Um, and the reason that I prefer the Pernambuco bows first and foremost is the responsiveness under my hand. You can't hear it on a video, but it's taking a lot more effort for me to make a clean sautier and a clean martelet on bows one and two, and to a lesser extent, three. It's harder for me to stabilize the bow when I want it to stop. I'm really having to add some tension in my arm to make it stop. The sautier is a, needs a lot less of my help on bows four and five. And I was having to tense up my arm actually to make bows one and two do a good sautier. And when I first got these bows, the first day I could not even make a sautier happen on bows one and two, but I've played on them all week. And so I'm starting to change how I do things to make it succeed with those bows. I'm not worried about it because it'll, It'll all return to normal once I get back to my normal bow and sit on it for a week. Oh, I forgot to say, the separation between the notes is much more clean and round on the more expensive bows and a lot more messy on the cheaper bows. And while the note is happening on those fast notes, in addition to having better separation between the notes, I'm getting a rounder, fuller, bigger sound when the note is happening on bows four and five, and to a lesser extent, bow three. Bows one and two, just a little bit less enjoyable on the note and a little bit less good separation between the notes. And then finally, I notice a certain sweetness and silkiness and smoothness in bows four and five that are lacking in the other three bows. And um, they feel very light in my hand, very balanced. So my arm is much more relaxed and less tired when I'm playing on those. All right, so I hope this helped shed some light on it. I know the bows are probably all sounding very similar now because I've changed how I'm playing to make the bows sound better. But I hope that you could hear a difference and I hope this has shown you some very decent bows all for under $400 from Southwest Strings. And no, I'm not... I don't take commissions from Southwest Strings. I did this for my private students to help them, and I thought I'll share with all of you as long as I'm doing it. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Let's play on my bow a little bit.